So a couple weeks ago, I made a video where I talked about every team's biggest draft whip since 2010. So I thought we might as well be positive for today's video. We're going to talk about every team's best draft pick since 2010. Obviously, some of these picks were no-brainers. So if you guys want to see me do another video where I give out my award for every team's best pick outside of the lottery, let me know by dropping a thumbs up on this video. And hit that subscribe button if you are not already, if you're enjoying the content. Yeah, for the New Orleans Pelicans, we'll start things off with, it's a no-brainer. They had the number one overall pick in the 2012 draft, and they took a general generational big man by the name of Anthony Davis. AD was the consensus number one overall pick, leading up to a pretty loaded 2012 draft class. He played seven years for the Hornets slash Pelicans, averaging 24 points, 10 and a half rebounds, and over a steal and two and a half blocks a night. He finished top 10 in MVP voting three different times as a Pelican, and outside of his rookie season, he made the All-Star game every single year, and he's one of the best players in Pelicans history. We're going to go over to the Houston Rockets, and we're going to talk about somebody that's currently breaking out in the 2024 season. Season, and that's Alperun Shangun. Obviously, the player that dominated Rockets basketball throughout the 2010s was James Harden, but they got him via OKC, and he was drafted in the 2009 draft anyway. Well, Shangun went 16th overall, technically to the Thunder, but they traded the rights to him on draft night to the Rockets, and he's been improving every single year as a Rocket. At age 19 in the 2022 season, he averaged 9.5 points. As a 20-year-old in the 2023 season, he averaged 14.5 points, and this year as a 21-year-old, he's averaging 21 points a night. He's also averaging 9 rebounds rebounds, five assists, and over a steal a night, shooting 54% from the field, and the defense has taken a step forward as well. And he's still just 21 years old. He's one of the best young big men in the league, and this pick is just that more impressive since it went 16th overall and not in the top 10. So for the San Antonio Spurs, we're going to talk about somebody that was drafted in 2011 that they traded for on draft night, and that was Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, the San Antonio Spurs made a trade with the Indiana Pacers that sent Kawhi Leonard and two international prospects, one of them being Davis Bertans, to the San Antonio Spurs in exchange for Jordan. George Hill. And the rest was kind of history with Kawhi as a spur. He played seven years in San Antonio, including a ring in 2014 and getting finals MVP that season as well. He won defensive player of the year in 2015. And in 2016, he went back to back. He really wasn't a true number one scoring option until the 2016 season, but between 16 and 17 in those two years, he averaged 23 and a half points, six rebounds and three assists a night, just under two steals and shot 49% from the field, 40% from three and 88% from the line. He was the most elite two-way player in the league at that time. And if I do make a video talking about picks outside of the lottery, obviously he would be in it, but you got to give some love to San Antonio selecting Derek White 29th overall in 2017 and DeJounte Murray 29th overall in 2016. But obviously with the way he started his career, we could talk about Victor Wembanyama as well. All right, we're going to go over to Memphis here. We're going to talk about John Morant, who was the second overall pick in 2019. This was a team that had a veteran point guard in Mike Conley, but his time in Memphis was nearing its end point. So the Memphis Grizzlies sent Mike Conley to the Utah Jazz when they knew they were going to have the second overall pick in this draft. We all knew that, that Zion Williamson was going to be the unanimous number one pick to New Orleans, so they were pretty much locked in at John Moran at number two. Ja has played five years in Memphis, averaging 22 and a half points, seven and a half assists, and five rebounds a night, shooting 47% from the field. He won Rookie of the Year in 2020, and he won Most Improved Player in 2022. All right, this is an obvious one for the Dallas Mavericks. We're going to talk about Luka Doncic, who they traded up for from five to three in the 2018 draft. That makes this pick look even better. This is Luka's sixth year in the NBA, and he's already a five-time All-Star and he was rookie of the year from this class. He's still just 24 years old and his career averages are 28 points, 8.2 assists, 8.6 rebounds a night, shooting 47% from the field and 34.5% from three. He's been on all NBA first team four different times all in the last four years and has finished top 10 in MVP voting in those four seasons as well. And this could be his first year winning the MVP award as he's averaging a league high 34.2 points per game, shooting 49% from the field and 37% from three in 2024. All right, the Minnesota Timberwolves have had some nice draft picks since 2010. They drafted Zach Levine 13th overall in 2014, Carl Anthony Towns number one overall in 2015. But we got to talk about Anthony Edwards, who was the number one overall pick in the 2020 draft. And wasn't a unanimous number one overall pick. We thought it could be between him or Lamelo Ball leading up to draft night. But then he gained some steam towards the end and the rest is history. As his four years in the league, he's averaged 22 and a half points, five rebounds, and four assists a night. He finished runner-up to Lamelo Ball in the Rookie of the Year voting in 2021. He was an All-Star in 2023 and in 2024. His points per game total has gone up and up each year in his career. 19 points as a rookie, 21 points per game as a sophomore, 
All-Star, 24 and a half points last year in his first All-Star season and 26 points per game this year, in which was his second All-Star season. For the Portland Trailblazers, we're going all the way back to 2012, in which they took Damian Lillard sixth overall out of Weber State. Dame was the rookie of the year from this class, averaging 19 points and six and a half assists as a rookie. He played 11 years in Portland, averaging 25 and a half points, 6.7 assists and 4.2 rebounds a night, having multiple accolades. As he was a seven-time All-Star in Portland, he was named to the NBA 75th anniversary team, and he was a seven-time All-NBA member as well. For the OKC Thunder, it was kind of tough because they made one of the greatest drafting stretches in NBA history, drafting Kevin Durant in 2007, Russell Westbrook in 2008, and James Harden in 2009. But obviously for the criteria of this video, we're going from 2010. And they traded for Shea Gilders Alexander. So I'm actually going to talk about Jalen Williams, J-Dub from the 2022 draft class. I decided to go with J-Dub over Chet just because he's played one extra year. They're both from the same draft class. J-Dub finished second in the rookie of the year, voting behind Paolo Bancaro from last year's class. And he's improved in every aspect of his game this season, averaging 19 points, four and a half assists, a steal a night, four rebounds a night, and oh yeah, the efficiency is off the charts. 54% from the field on 14 shots a night, 45% from three on three and a half attempts a night, and he's shooting 81% from the line, and he's also a plus defender as well, and he's still just 22 years old. They traded for Demontis Sabonis as well in the 2016 draft, but he only played one year in OKC. Going up to Salt Lake City, let's talk about the Utah Jazz, and it's going to be Donovan Mitchell from the 2017 draft. You could also talk about them getting Rudy Gobert, 27th overall in the 2013 draft. Both these players, they traded for from the Denver Nuggets, and Mitchell spent five years in Utah. He was a three-time All-Star, finished runner-up in Rookie of the Year to Ben Simmons back in 2018. And in those five years in Utah, he averaged 24 points, four and a half assists, and shot 44% from the field and 36% from three. He helped the Jazz win multiple playoff series like beating the Thunder in six games in 2018 and beating the Memphis Grizzlies in five games in 2021. And drafting him 13th overall was a phenomenal selection by the Jazz. All right, going over to Denver now, where we have maybe the greatest draft pick in NBA history because he was the 41st overall pick in 2014, and that's going to be Nikola Jokic. Jokic was drafted during a Taco Bell commercial. Jokic has spent nine years in the NBA, and he's a six-time All-Star, a five-time All-NBA member. Oh yeah, a two-time MVP winner, most recent Finals MVP winner. He's averaged 20 and a half points, 10 and a half rebounds, and seven assists on his career. But if we look at just the last four years since 2021, he's averaging 26, 12, and nine over a steal a night, shooting almost 60% from the field, 36% from three, and 82% from the line. Those are video game numbers from the Joker. I kind of went back and forth on who I wanted to talk about from the Golden State Warriors, one being in the 2011 draft class, one being in the 2012. So I'm just going with the best player because that's kind of been my philosophy for this video. And obviously, if we talk about the non lottery picks, we can talk about the other one because he was a second rounder in 2012. You probably already know who he is, but we're going to talk about Clay Thompson, who was the 11th overall pick in 2011. Clay was drafted out of Washington State, and he's been a five-time All-Star for Golden State. He was on the 2012 All-Rookie Team. He was on the 2019 All-Defensive Team. He's been all NBA twice in his career. And oh yeah, he's a four-time NBA champion. And he's one of the greatest three-point shooters of all time. And just one of the greatest three and D players as well. I kind of went back and forth on who I wanted to talk about for the Sacramento Kings. Both being fifth overall picks. You could talk about DeMarcus Cousins in 2010, who was the fifth overall pick out of Kentucky. But we're going to talk about who they took fifth overall out of Kentucky in 2017, De'Aaron Fox. I decided to go with Fox over Cousins just because he ended up making the playoffs with the Kings. Fox is in his seventh year with Sacramento. And he's averaged 21 points, six assists on 47 percent shooting and he's really turned his game up a notch since the 2021 season over those last four years he's averaged 25 points six assists and four rebounds a night all right the clippers haven't had a ton of draft picks that have been on their team for a long time throughout the 2010s they were pretty much a good team then and they moved a lot of their first rounders but somebody they drafted or technically traded for during the 2018 draft is shea gilgis alexander shea went 11th overall out of kentucky he played one year for the clippers playing all 82 games he was sixth in rookie of the year he averaged 11 points three and a half assists, 1.2 steals on good efficiency. But then obviously he headlined a Paul George trade later that offseason and the rest is history. Ashe has turned his game up a notch every single year and is one of the best players in the NBA in 2024. The Lakers were bad throughout the mid 2010s. They had the second overall pick multiple times, taking D'Lo in 2015, Lonzo Ball in 2017. But we're going to go with Brandon Ingram, who was the second overall pick in 2016. The Lakers were pretty underrated drafting team as well, getting guys like Josh Hart and Kyle Kuzma in the late first round. But yeah, I opted to go with Brandon Ingram, who played three years in LA, scoring nine and a half points as a rookie as a 19 year old, 16 points in the sophomore year, and then 18 points in his third year, and was the headline piece coming back in the Anthony Davis trade in the 2019 offseason. Funny enough, he won most improved player in his first year as a Pelican. So the Phoenix Suns were one of the worst drafting teams throughout the 2010s. They whiffed on so many guys like Josh Jackson, Dragon Bender, Marquise Chris, and Jalen Smith, 
but this is an obvious pick here. It's going to be Devin Booker, who they selected in the 2015 draft, 13th overall. Booker is in his ninth year in Phoenix. He is a four-time All-Star. He was a member of the 2022 All-NBA team, and he has averaged 24 points, four rebounds, and five assists. Over the course of his career with the Phoenix Suns, he's probably going to go down as one of the best players in franchise history, and honestly has a really good chance as going down as the best player in Phoenix Suns history. One thing that I just love to do to spice up watching the NBA, either it's at home or going to the game, is playing fantasy sports. Today's video is sponsored by the e Easiest way to play fantasy sports all NBA season and that is underdog fantasy it's my favorite place to play fantasy games my favorite part about underdog is the pick them feature that is super easy to play you pick two to five stats of your favorite players or either a game you plan on watching or following and choose if they can go higher or lower it could be in personal fouls it could be in points it could be in triple doubles I recently hit a four picks for a hundred dollars on Christmas Day where I got Josh Hart to get higher than seven points Damian lower to get higher than 25 and a half points Jalen Brunson higher than four and a half free throws made and then another thing that I love that underdog does is promos at times which you can combine in a pick and play and this was one point equals you win for Giannis Antetokounmpo all I needed him to get was over a half a point and they'll do plenty of those throughout the season as well and if you get all your picks right you can make up to 20 times your money on a single NBA game. you can also do rivals picks as well which pits two players against each other and that could be in your typical points rebounds and assists as well so yeah what are you waiting for sign up at underdog fantasy today at underdogfantasy.com or the app store and use my promo code SROS Ross to get a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred dollars you also receive a new customer special or aka a mystery pick which will get you a pick'em special in your lobby when you sign up using code Ross that you can see on your screen now you also must be a certain age in your state to play underdog fantasy every state that's legal to play underdog will be in the description below and please like always remember to play responsibly so yeah Use code SRAWS at sign up to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. And thank you again to Underdog for sponsoring today's video. You could go for two players with the Washington Wizards. You could go with Bradley Beal in 2012, but I'm going to go with John Wall, who's the number one overall pick in 2010. I do feel like Wall's peak was a little bit higher than Beal's peak. And when they played together, it always felt like Wall was the better of the two. Obviously, injuries did derail Wall's career, and he was not the same after the 2019 season. Wall played nine years in Washington, averaging 19 points and nine assists and 1.7 steals a night as well. He was a five-time all-star he was on the 2017 all-nba team 2015 all-defensive team and he did finish second in rookie of the year voting in 2011 because blake griffin from the 2009 draft sat out his rookie year and ended up being a rookie in the 2011 season the miami heat were really good throughout the 2010s and obviously in the start of the 2020s as well but a player they took with the last pick of the lottery in 2017 is going to make this video and that's bam out of bio or should i say it reset a bio this is bam's seventh year as a member of the miami heat his first two years he was pretty inconsistent for miami but since the 2020 season he's been an absolute beast for them averaging 19 points 10 rebounds four and a half assists over a steal and block a night shooting 54 percent from the field he was second in most improved voting in 2020 he has four top five defensive player of the year finishes he's a three-time all-star and a four-time all defensive second team member so for the Atlanta Hawks we are going to go with somebody they traded down for in the 2018 draft obviously they didn't know how good Luka Doncic was going to become but they still drafted a very good player fifth overall and that was Trey Young Trey is still just 20 25 years old and he's been one of the best offensive players since he's entered the NBA. This is year number six for Trey and he's averaged 25 and a half points, nine and a half assists on 44% shooting for Atlanta. He's a three-time NBA All-Star. He finished runner-up to Luka Doncic in the 2019 Rookie of the Year voting and he helped lead the Hawks to a conference finals appearance in the 2021 season. I kind of had some trouble going with the Orlando Magic. He made a nice draft pick of Aaron Gordon in 2014 in the top 10. Obviously, Paolo Bancaro has been a beast as the number one pick in 2023 and Franz Wagner has been a beast as the eighth overall pick in 2021, but I do think Paolo Bancaro is the better of the two. You could say Franz is a little bit more impressive since it was the eighth overall pick, but if you go back to the 2022 draft, nobody really knew that Paolo was going to be the number one overall pick. We all thought it was going to be Jabari Smith Jr. until the day of the draft, and the Orlando Magic kind of shocked everybody went with Paolo Bancaro, and it looks like it was definitely the right decision. As Paolo was on Team USA last year, he was also the Rookie of the Year winner from the 2022 class, averaging 20 points and seven rebounds, and this year in his sophomore season, he's averaging 23 points, 
seven rebounds, and five assists, shooting 46% from the field, 36% from three, and was just named as an all-star. All right, I had some debate on who I wanted to go here with the Charlotte Hornets. It's a point guard they drafted in 2011 or a point guard they drafted in 2020. And I'm going to go with Kemba Walker, who they drafted ninth overall in 2011. I do think LaMelo Ball will eventually be a better Hornet than Kemba was for them. But Kemba was a Hornet for eight seasons. He was even a Bobcat for three years. Kemba averaged 20 points, five and a half assists, and four rebounds a night. For Charlotte, shooting 42% from the field and 36% from three. The team could not draft to save their lives around Kemba Walker, and they did a horrible job building around him as the top guy. But I still think Kemba was their best draft pick. But once we get some more of a mellow Charlotte Hornets years under our belt, it'll probably be a mellow. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, we're going to go with the number one overall pick from the 2011 draft. And that's going to be Kyrie Irving, who spent six years in Cleveland, averaging 21 and a half points, five and a half assists, shot 46% from the field, 38% from three. He was the rookie of the year in 2012. He was a four-time All-Star as a Cav. He was on All-NBA third team in 2015. And oh yeah, he had one of the greatest shots in NBA history in game seven of the 2016 finals. Going to Chi-Town, let's talk about Jimmy Butler, who was the 30th overall pick in the 2011 draft. So we have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back picks from the 2011 class. Jimmy spent six years in Chicago. It took him a little bit to get kind of acclimated to the NBA level, really didn't play at all. In his rookie season, he actually finished top 20th in depoy voting in year two. He was an all-defensive second team in year three and won most improved player and was an all-star in year four. In his last three years in Chicago, he averaged 22 points, six rebounds, and four and a half assists a night, and also just under two steals as well. And he was one of the best two-way players in the league, like Kawhi Leonard, who we mentioned before, and a player we're about to mention now for the Indiana Pacers. And that player is Paul George, who was the 10th overall pick in the 2010 draft. So we're going as far back as possible. PG-13 played seven years for the Pacers and obviously went through one of the most gruesome injuries ever. We saw him play for Team USA in the 2014 Olympics. He won most improved player in 2013. In his last two years in Indiana, before getting traded to OKC, he averaged 23 and a half points, seven rebounds, and three and a half assists a night. And he was a four-time All-Star in Indiana before getting traded to OKC in the 2017 offseason. The Milwaukee Bucks, we're going to talk about the 15th overall pick from the 2013 draft. He is still a buck today. He's going to be one of the greatest players in NBA history, and that's Giannis Antetokounmpo. This is Giannis's 11th year as a buck, and if we go from his most improved player season in 2017 to current day, he's averaged 28 points, 11 rebounds, five and a half assists a night, 1.2 steals, 1.3 blocks on 55% shooting. He's a multiple time MVP winner. He won most improved in 2017, as I just mentioned. He was also defensive player of the year. The same year he won MVP in 2020, he was a finals winner and finals MVP in 2021. He's a seven time all NBA member and a five time all defensive team member. And like I said, he's going to go down as one of the greatest players in NBA history. All right, for the Detroit Pistons, this team also wasn't great at drafting since 2010. Obviously they made the home run pick, just a no brainer taking Cade Cunningham number one overall in 2021. But I'm actually going to go with somebody they drafted ninth overall in 2012, and that's Andre Drummond. If you were a fan at the time that Andre Drummond was a Piston, you knew he was one of the greatest rebounders of all time. He led the league in rebounding in the 2016, 18, 19, and 20 season. He finished top 10 in depoy voting two different times. He was a two-time All-Star, and he averaged 14 and a half points and 14 rebounds in over a steal and block a night in his eight years in Detroit. So since DeMar DeRozan was drafted by the Raptors in the 2009 draft, he was not eligible for this video. So we're going to talk about Pascal Siakam, who was the 27th overall pick in 2016. Nobody really knew too much about the New Mexico State standout from Cameroon, and Siakam really didn't do much in his rookie season, just averaging 4.2 points a night. Then in year two in his sophomore year, averaged 7.3 points, but then he broke out winning most improved player in 2019, averaging 17 points and seven rebounds, and was one of the better players on the 2019 Raptors championship squad. And since that a most improved season, what he's done for Toronto is 21 and a half points, seven and a half rebounds, and four and a half assists. Like I said, he was part of that 2019 championship roster. He was on all NBA second team in 2020, all NBA third team in 2022, and was an all-star on two different occasions for the Toronto Raptors. I had some debate on who I wanted to go here for the Brooklyn Nets, but I'm going to go with Jared Allen, who was the 22nd overall pick in 2017. Allen just played four years in Brooklyn before being in that James Harden trade back in 2021. And leading up to that trade for Brooklyn, he averaged 11 points, eight rebounds, and a block and a half a night, shot 61% from the field, and finished top 12 in deep point voting in the 2019 and 20 seasons. Brooklyn really didn't draft a ton of guys throughout the 2010s and the early 2020s as they owed a lot of their first round picks to the Boston Celtics and then they traded away a lot of their first round picks when they acquired James Harden. This is a no-brainer for the New York Knicks. Their best draft pick since 2010 has to be Chris Stapps Porzingis from 2015. You got to give them some bonus points as well because everybody hated this pick and said it was dumb and it was a reach and he turned out to be a top five player from this class. He only played three years in New York because he did tear his ACL in the 2018 season but in those three years for the Knicks he averaged 18 points, 
seven rebounds and shot 36% from three, also two blocks a night as well. He finished second in rookie of the year in 2016 and was an all-star in 2018 before getting injured. And for a brief moment, he made New York Knicks basketball relevant again before it went into a downward spiral in the 2019 season. Man, the 76ers had a lot of good draft picks since 2010 because they were bad for so long, but we're going to talk about Joel Embiid, who was the third overall pick in the 2014 draft, the start of the process. Embiid missed his first two years in the NBA with foot injuries, but since he came onto the scene in 2017, he's averaged 28 points, 11 rebounds, three and a half assists a night, just under two blocks, shooting 50% from the field, and oh yeah, great accolades. Seven-time All-Star, five-time All-NBA member, three-time All-Defensive Team member, and a two-time scoring champion, and oh yeah, the most recent MVP from the 2023 season. And to finish the video off, let's talk about the Boston Celtics on a player they traded down for in the 2017 draft from one to three to select Jason Tatum out of Duke. This is one of the greatest draft night trades in NBA history as Tatum is well on his way to being a future Hall of Famer. This is year seven for Tatum on the Celtics and he's a five-time All-Star, three-time All-NBA member, the 2023 All-Star MVP, and he was the 2022 Eastern Conference Finals MVP. And since the 2021 season over the last four years, he's averaged 27 and a half points, eight rebounds, and four and a half assists a night. So I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you guys wanted me to see me do this again, but with picks outside of the lottery, because a lot of these are kind of chalky picks who they took number one overall. But if you guys want to see kind of those late first round gems or those second round diamond in the roughs, just let me know by dropping a thumbs up. The podcast is back. Link to those are in the description below. You can also follow my Instagram, Twitter, 2K channel, TikTok. Everything there is in the description. And thank you all for watching again. I love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.